back. Um, welcome back. This is now question 14, part B, uh, continuation of the question. We already found the coordinates of A and B where the two, the line and the curve intersect, okay, which is at 2 minus 2 minus 7 and 6, 9. These are the two coordinates of those two points. And now we've got to find um, the shaded area R, shaded region R, which is bounded by the line y plus 2x minus 3 and the curve C, okay, the equation of which is given here, x squared minus 2x minus 15, and the positive x-axis. So this region here, which is bounded by those three boundaries, we've got to find the area of that region. Now, integrate. it says use integration to calculate the exact value for the area of R. Okay, so now... It's going to be an, an answer which is either in third form or you know some sort of form that um, you should express in its exact form instead of rounding to 3SF. That's what it means there. Eh? Now, to find the area under a curve or a line or whatever by integration, okay, you need to have some limits through which to integrate. And that will give you the area between the x-axis and that curve or that line. Now, in this case, the region R is below the line and kind of above the curve. However, part of it is cut out here. You don't need this area here. So the strategy that I think would be best for us here to deal with this, the easiest way to deal with this, I'll just zoom in a bit so we can see what's going on. Um, I think it would be best for us to do the following. Let's draw a line, okay, between, and draw a line, get dotted and thin, between the point B, the x axis, vertically down. Now I know the coordinates of B are 6 and 9. 6 on the x and 9 on the y. So this must be 6, and that must be then 9. Okay? So you can think of this as like a triangle, okay? Now, in this triangle, you have this distance between here and this point six. So I need to find the coordinates of this point to find, I can find the area of this triangle just using a half base times height. Okay, but what I also need to do is to take away from that this area over here, which I'm gonna put in a different color. Okay, if you think about the area in this section here, if I find the area of that little section, which is the area under the curve between these two points, okay, if I find the area under the curve between these two points, and that's where the integration comes in, then I will have, you know, done what I needed to do. Okay, if I find the area under the curve, between 5 and 6, or between these two points, you don't know if it's 5 yet, come back to that later, later. Between these two points, that's 6 and that's what we have to find, okay? I kind of worked out that what it is, but I'll show you how to do that. Um, and we take from that, we, we take that area away from the area of this triangle, then we've got the area that we need. Now, first thing we need to ask ourselves, what is the area of this triangle? Okay, so we need to find the coordinates of this point. Let me call this x1. And let me call this x2. I need to find the, air, the, the coordinates of these two points in order to proceed to find the area of the triangle and the area under this curve. So let's start with x1. How can we find the, the coordinates of x1? Well, x1 is on the x-axis, and it's where this line cuts the x-axis. So when it's y, it's basically the point when y equals 0. So when 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, that's how we're going to find where this coordinate of x1 is. So you've got 2x equals 3, so x equals 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So I know that this is 1.5, okay? That will help me find the area of the triangle now, okay? Because I know the base is going to be 6 minus 1.5, and the height is 9, okay? The vertical height. And then I need to find the coordinates of x2. Now, x2 is the point where the curve cuts the x-axis, it's the, the point on the positive side of the x-axis, cuts it in two places. And that's when y equals 0 in this equation here. So when x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0, we can factorize this. We have x here, 
we have x bracket in both brackets. This is one of those again a simple factorizing. We have just one x squared. Different signs. Two numbers multiplied to give you 15, and the difference is two. Well, that's five and three. So you've got a negative five and a positive three because three minus five is minus two. So then either x plus three equals zero, in which case x has to be minus three or x minus 5 equals 0, in which case x has to be positive 5. So obviously this is going to be 5 now. Okay. So now I have all the information I need to go ahead and find the area under this curve. So let me zoom back out again. Okay, so now what I need to do is find the area of the triangle. So the area... So I need to find the area of the triangle, okay, which is equal to a half times the base. Now the base is 6 minus 1.5, okay, which is going to be uh, 4.5. Okay, so a half times 4.5 times the height, which is 9. Okay, so a half times the base times the height, okay? So that's going to give us 4.5 times 4.5, isn't it? So the half, a half, oops, times the base, times the height. That gives us 81 over 4, we can write as 20.25. I'll leave that as a fraction. Okay, I'll leave that as a fraction for now. Okay, that's the first part. Then we want to find the area of the curve between 5 and 6. So it's like we've got the curve. We want to find this area here. This is 5 and this is 6. Okay, so that's going to be the integral between 5 and 6 of, now the equation of the, the curve is x squared minus 2x minus 50. So x squared minus 2x minus 15 with respect to x. That will give me the area of this curve, this shade, this, this curve under the curve, which if I take away from the area of the triangle, I will have found my required area. So let's find out what this is. We go to integrate. So x cubed over 3. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. Minus 2x squared. Remember, there's a 1 here. You add 1 to the power. 2x squared over 2. 2x squared over 2. The 2's cancel, leaving you with x squared. And minus 15. Now remember, if it's a constant, you just put an x because this is actually, it's actually 15x to the power 0. That's what that means. You add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, you get 15x over 1, which is 15x. Now, remember, when you have definite integrals, we don't need to write the plus c because that will cancel out when you do the next step anyway. So you don't have to write it when you have a definite integral, when you have these limits to put in. So now we're going to find out what this is. So we substitute the values of 6 and 5 into this. You've got 6 cubed over 3 minus 6 squared minus 15 times 6. Okay. Um, let's put that in. Curly bracket minus, and you're going to have 5 cubed over 3 minus 5 squared minus 15 times 5. And that should give you the area under the curve between those two points that we mentioned. So we're going to have this. We're going to have 6 cubed over 3. So let me just put bracket and then bracket. 6 cubed over 3. Three minus six squared. Because they're positive, you don't have to worry about putting them in a bracket. If it was a negative, if it was a negative six squared, I'd have to put negative six negative inside the bracket as well. Um, minus fifteen times six, I'll put times like this. 
Okay, that's the first bracket. Then minus, they're going to take away the same thing, but with five put in place of the x instead. So I'll just repeat the same thing. Five cubed divided by three minus five squared minus 15 times five. Be very careful when you type in these numbers in. It's easy to make a mistake. Close the main bracket, and that equals 13 over 3. Okay, so that gives us 13 over 3. So we have the two areas we need to subtract from each other. So we have 81 over 4. So the required area, okay, the area of R is going to be 81 over 4 minus 13 over 3. So 81 over 4 minus 13 over 3, which will give us a required answer. So 81, 81 over 4 minus 13 over 3. One nine one over twelve. One hundred and ninety-one over twelve. Which, if you want, you can leave it like that. That's perfectly acceptable. If you want to express it as a a mixed number, you can do so. Fifteen and eleven over twelve. If you want, both of them are acceptable. Okay. So there we have it. That's how you find the area of R in this question. Okay. And um, yeah, one one little thing you can do with your calculator is you can use it to check for example here if you wanted to check the, the integration that we did for this you could check it using a calculator to make sure and you know this is perfectly fine of course you can't just write this answer down you have to show your steps but you can put these values in and then you can use your calculator you can have um, x squared Oops. Go into here. All right, so you're going to have x squared minus 2x minus 15. Put that in a bracket. And then press equals. 13 over 3. Okay, so we see we got the same answer. So we know we've done it right. Okay, so of course you can't just use your calculator without showing these steps. This is this calculator is allowed in your exam, okay, as we've been told by some of the examiners. And there's no problem with you using this function uh, as a checking tool to check to see that you've done you haven't made a silly mistake somewhere. Right, but your steps must be shown. If you just write the answer down, you're liable to lose all of the marks for the question. Okay, so you must make sure that you do show your steps, that you show the examiner you know how to integrate without just plugging everything into this calculator, but you can use this as a checking tool in order to make sure that you haven't made a silly mistake and you can correct it if you find one. Okay, it's very easy to make mistakes here when you've got so many different numbers to plug in and squares and cubes. It's very simple to just press the wrong button, so it's very useful for you to be able to use something like this in order to check to see whether you've got the right answer or not. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this question. Um, thank you for watching.